this is Steve Dolan, former assistant Detroit police chief. So let's thank you for joining us. No and let's get right into this. How much of a black eye is this for Detroit police? It's a huge black eye for Detroit police. Actually, for all law enforcement. We're held to a higher standard. And whether you like it or not, once you put on the badge, you're held to a higher standard for them to do something like this. And there's enough there that the prosecutor feels there's enough to charge. Uh, there's a black eye. I'm retired, and I'm embarrassed by this. How surprising is this? When you hear incidents involving police officers, how surprising is it? It's not. Um, it's not? No. Why? Because police officers are human, and they do stupid things, just like everyone else does. But this is criminal. Stupid is one thing, criminal is another. Uh, the road rage incident, get the license plate number. Why do you got to pull a gun? And again, I don't know all the circumstances behind that. A 26-year veteran, that tells me that the individual's probably in their 40s, maybe late 40s, early 50s. So they're mature enough to know not to do that. However, I don't know what the circumstances were because that hasn't been released yet. Am I correct? To my understanding. Okay. Uh, the CSC, my question was, and I mentioned this earlier, was it a CSC, excuse me, CSC, criminal sexual conduct, was in the first degree, second degree, third degree, or fourth degree? Fourth degree would be the lowest, first uh, one would be the highest. Did this individual use a weapon uh, and force himself upon the, uh, the victim? It's a crime. Kim Worthy would not charge you unless she felt competent enough to think she would uh, get a conviction or guilty plea. When something happens like this with a police officer or within a police department, does it send shock waves through the entire uh, police force? Or, or is it just an isolated incident where they say, look, they did something wrong. It shouldn't reflect anything that we're doing here. It upsets all the officers because for every good thing you do, it's like take one step forward, two steps back. You do something good, and then citizens are going, see, you wonder why we don't trust you guys? You guys stu do stupid stuff like this, criminal acts. What if it was us that did that? What would you do to us? So it, 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 definitely a black guy, it upsets me. The chief is upset, the upper echelon is upset. Every police officer will be upset because you just embarrass the police department and all law enforcement by um, these egregious acts. There, there's been suspensions involved here so far with pay. Obviously, it could change any moment where those police officers could potentially lose their jobs. When you see a situation like this, uh, do you expect officers, when they are arrested, in, let's say, situations that we're seeing today, do you expect them to be able to keep their jobs? No, unless they're vindicated, which I don't think will be. Again, that's down the road. MCO, which is the uh, licensing of the uh, Michigan, Michigan Police Law Enforcement, would say, no, you, if you're convicted of these crimes, you can't be in Detroit, you can't be anywhere else in the state as a police officer. As far as being suspended without pay, the chief has to go to the board of police commissioners on Thursday, ask for the suspension without pay um, per the contract. So suspended with pay, he'll push for without, and then if they're uh, found guilty, uh, M. Cole say you're losing your license, at least of their words, because they'll be going to jail. So walk me through this process. When, when something like this happens, unfortunately happens, what is the procedure here? For, from where we are right now, from what we just heard from Kelly Vaughn, where, where do things go from here? They'll go to um, preliminary examination, which is within 11 days, see if there's enough to proceed forward uh, in a case. And then they'll have a um, conference among the um, two parties, figure out a trial date, uh, do the evidentiary hearing, and it'll proceed. And if it's that egregious, I'm assuming the officers will take a plea. They'll lose their jobs, lose their certification. Um, as it is right now, once they're charged, like, the chances are they'll lose, be suspended without pay. and. Um, Boom, boom, boom. They're found guilty. I mean, they gave him, what, a $100,000 bond? Personal bond. So no money down. And he has to wear a tether. We don't know about the, uh, the female. And again, was a weapon used in the CSC? That, to me, is the important thing. I mean, either way, it's bad. But if you're, and it's off duty, you're under the color of law, you can't do that. It's, you're tarnishing the badge. And I'm very proud of the badge. And when people do stuff like that, it infuriates me, embarrasses the department. And, you can see why people don't trust the police. Anymore. Yeah, and, and that was kind of leading me to the next question. Does an incident like this, along with many others, does it make people go, here we go again, there are bad cops? Absolutely. And, and the sad part is, there's so many good police officers and good cops. There's a difference. There's such a, so many good ones. And you have a couple of people that do something stupid. 
whether they're intoxicated, angry, whatever. You can't do that. And now you've made us all look bad. And here we go again, trying to build up your confidence as a citizen in me when I make a traffic stop. All right, we'll continue this conversation after a quick break. Stay with us. You're watching CBS News Detroit. We are continuing our coverage of the two DPT officers charged with felonies. In a press conference this afternoon, Police Chief James White says the situation is very disappointing for his department. Let's take a listen. Uh, the alleged conduct is certainly disturbing. Uh, you know, we are held to a higher standard, plain and simple, and uh, these allegations uh, are, are certainly disturbing. Well, former DPD Assistant Chief uh, Steve Dolan still with us tonight. Do you think announcing these arrests to the public will go a long way, having a press conference like this to help regain the trust if trust was lost today? Yes, they're showing transparency. It's embarrassing, but they're showing, showing transparency. They say, hey, look, we screwed up. We know we screwed up, and this is what happened, and this is what we're going to do moving forward. To me, that instills confidence, I mean, somewhat. If I'm a citizen, the police department going, where do you get these rogue officers? But at the same time, you as a chief are saying, I'm not tolerating this. You shouldn't tolerate this as a citizen. We're not above the law. If we break the law, we got to be held accountable. Do you feel like there's more transparency today than there was 10 years ago, 20 years oh, ago, 30 years ago? Absolutely. And why is that? Uh, media. Everyone's filming everything. When I came on a long time ago, we had, we didn't have beepers. <laughs> we didn't have none of the social media. And then people start coming out and showing a clip, showing a clip, showing a clip. And the police finally realized, you know what? We should do this too and be transparent and show the citizens, hey, we actually understand that we're not perfect. And now, good, good or bad, because you see sometimes you see shootouts live when, and they go, how can the police do that? Well, then you see the whole thing, you go, oh. But then you also see when the cops do something stupid and you go, oh. So yeah. And I think a lot of it comes back to training. When you see portions of videos it's important to note that we don't also know necessarily how police officers are trained. True. As far as this situation, when you do talk about transparency and you do talk about losing trust in the police, in Detroit police, mm -hmm. what needs to be done now going forward to be able to correct this situation to regain the public's trust? Work our butts off, work our butts off hard to show you that we really do care. And this is a small percentage of people committing crimes. But the majority of us really care. And you're total strangers. We're coming to help you. We run in when you run out. Unfortunately, there's a couple bad apples that do something stupid. Please don't judge us. Like, we shouldn't judge you, a small minority of people that commit crimes. Most of the city of Detroit are law-abiding citizens. I interact with them for 31 years. Great people, love the community. Small percentage of people ruin it for uh, the citizens and the law-abiding citizens and a small percentage of police officers ruin it for all law enforcement. I think it's hard for people maybe to fathom that two police officers would be arrested for two felonies when you say, okay, in the academy when they are training, wouldn't police officers who are capable of something like this potentially, allegedly, would they be able to be weeded out? As a rule, they are weeded out. Um, but as in anything, people slip through the cracks. There's anger management. Obviously, this um, it appears that this road rage thing was anger. Okay, people are angry, but you don't pull your gun. Sexual assault, I shouldn't have to train you about that. It's a crime. You can't do it. It's common sense. You broke the law. And I don't know less circumstances, but no means no. I am curious again, what is it? CSC 1, 2, 3, or 4. S CSC 1 being, you know, the most violent. And he got a $100,000 bond and a tether. So we'll see, but you can't train someone in the academy not to have committed crime. You're there for a reason. So you want to stop crime. So you're defeating the purpose by committing a crime. Right? Ignorance is no justice for CSC. Right, rage. and we're dealing with this today. We're talking about these two incidents today. Mm -hmm. And just a few weeks ago, we saw that a Detroit police commissioner resigned after he was allegedly caught with a prostitute. And so he tried to use his position to get out of the incident. He resigns. And you talk about transparency. You talk about the division that oversees the police department. Then we have an issue there where 
he's committing a crime. And so is there a, a systematic issue with Detroit police and the group overseeing it? That these uh, individuals are gaining positions um, and then they're committing crimes? Well, they're not sworn officers. They're most of them are appointed, some are elected. I'm not sure if um, he was elected or appointed by the mayor. I don't know. Uh, and unfortunately, as soon as he stopped by the Wayne County Sheriff's, he said, can't you give me a break? I'm a police commissioner. You want a break? Don't commit a crime. And again, and it's until proven guilty, but, and the board has taken a lot of heat because uh, it doesn't appear years ago, it, it seemed to have more power than they do now. They, a lot of infighting on the board. Some commissioners are better than others, and um, some are pushing for transparency more with the police department. You know, tug of war. But are these yeah. too many? Are these too many incidents surrounding and involving Detroit police? Too many. Um, I mean, one would be considered too many. But if, when, you, when you're seeing what we're talking about today and what we saw a few okay. weeks ago with the police commissioner, is this too many surrounding the police? Okay, the commissioner that's separate from the police department. Again, they're not sworn. White has no control over them. That's a city charter. Those are civilians, a civilian oversight Right, but board. they oversee... Yeah, that's the problem. You oversee me and you're committing a crime? Come on. Is the public going to have that much faith in you and we're going to get down with the police department? Is the police department going to say, wait a minute, you're telling us what to do and you're breaking the law? Isn't that, you know, wrong? So, yeah, it's, it's frustrating. And if I'm a citizen, I'm going, what the hell's going on there? What the heck's going on there in the police department? But... um yeah, there, there's some tension there. And you're, you ought to go to one of those meetings. You really ought to, because you wouldn't believe what goes on in some of those Board of Police Commission meetings. They go two, three hours, and people complain, complain, and the board argues. And, and the sad part is they could do so much more if they could get along. It's kind of like our government. If they got along, get a lot more stuff done. Is there a cultural issue, do you think, by any means, with Detroit police? It's gotten a lot better since when I came on. Because when I came on, in the 80s, there definitely was a problem. We were majority white in a predominantly, predominantly black city. We had a lot of Vietnam veterans who did things a certain way. That culture slowly been changing. And I think under White and, and Craig before this, there's more community involvement than there was before. And do you believe this is potentially an isolated incident that we're talking about today? Or do you think still more issues need to be cleaned up within the, the department? Well, this wasn't on duty, which makes me feel better. I guess we just have to be a little more but, careful in who we hire. But when, we, when you talk about on duty or not on du off duty, police officers are sworn in, and, and, they, and they need to act accordingly totally in agree. all situations. Totally agree. We're held to a higher standard, and we should be held to a higher standard. <sighs> Unfortunately, um, we do stupid things. And I think the culture's gotten a lot better, but I... Here you have a young person, an older person, one 26-year veteran with five. So can you say the culture's changed a lot or hasn't changed at all? And it's debatable. There's, it's I'm biting my lip. Well, I know, it's I know it's frustrating it is. for you it is. and, and it somebody is. that was in the department for decades. But I've seen so many things that were, if I wrote a book, you wouldn't believe it. You'd say, that stuff, you made that up. There are things that happened in the past, and they were shoved under the rug. Now they're coming out. I give white credit uh, for doing this and saying, look, guys, we screwed up. We own it. We'll handle it. Uh, it's going to be breaking news on all the news stations, but we have to own it, and he, and he did. Now we just got to rebuild your trust again. Please trust us. And you know, a month ago was Greektown. Now there's no problems in Greektown. But now you have this. It's, sure. It's embarrassing. It certainly is. Yes. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Steve Dolan, former assistant chief of Detroit police, serving the city for more than 30 years. We appreciate the insight into this.